Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. We're back at the Reilly Farm in the Waterloo Area Historical Society has welcomed us to shoot here. We say thank you to them. Today we're going to use the time here to talk about something that every soldier in the infantry needed to know how to do. How do you clean your musket? Okay, now that we say what we're going to do, let's be sure and be clear what we're not going to do. I know of at least three different ways to clean your modern investment of firearms when you're at home. There are people who love every single one of them. We're not taking a dog in that fight. What we want to talk about today is the information in the United States Ordnance Manual about how to clean the musket in the field. Let's get started. So as you clean the musket, what does the Ordnance Manual say you need? First, they say you need water, and they said warm if possible. So we've warmed water by the fire. You also need your primary tools that come with your musket. We talked about these in an earlier episode with Mark Krause from H's Pelican and Campbell. But to review, they are the combination tool, the wiper, and the tompion. We've also gone to the cap pouch and pulled the cone pick out. In the ordnance manual, it says that you're going to need either tow or cotton cloth. We've got examples of both of those. The peg here is a peg of softwood that the ordnance manual asks for, and it asks for oil. How do we get oil? The best I can figure is to go to a sutler and procure some. Looking at sutler records, there's really two types. There's sweet oil and there's armor oil. Today, olive oil will serve as our sweet oil. Let's go ahead and get started. Now the ordnance manual says the first thing you're supposed to do with a dirty weapon is go ahead and use this peg of softwood to stopper the cone. Now, it says to take a gill of water warm if possible. A gill, you're not going to have a measure in the field and it really doesn't matter. It's about four ounces. We've heated the water by the fire, making sure not to make it too hot to burn yourself. Personally, I'm leaving my musket at an angle. If I tip it all the way up, I'm gonna run into the issue of water coming out, getting down here and creating more rust where I don't want it. I like keeping it at a bit of an angle so that I can go ahead and get more of it in and what doesn't drips off and drops off the weapon fastest. One of the great things about having warm water is the hot's gonna evaporate faster. We're not gonna create as much rust. It says to let it sit in the bottom a little bit. And if we come down here, we can notice we're starting to see some water dripping off. I'll show you something when we change this out that I find that I actually prefer to the ordinance manual. After you've let that sit for a little bit, the ordinance manual says to go ahead and slosh it back and forth a couple of times over the years that I've found that this is going to be really helpful. Just to put my finger on the end. Nothing is so hot in the water that I'm going to burn myself. We're just looking to loosen up the fouling from firing the musket. And then finally, we're going to pour it out. Our goal is to do that until clear. Okay, so what was the thing that I found that I like better than what the ordinance manual says? If you have a little bit of spare cotton, whether it's a rag, whether it's a leftover handkerchief or something like that, my preference here is to not get as much water there. I fold four layers and then I use the hammer to set down on the cone and use that to stop water coming out the bottom. Let's go ahead and pour some more in here. Hmm. Now remember, the more you take your time, the more accurate are that, the less water you pour out, the less times you have to go to a water source that's probably not close by. So be as careful as you can, even if you have to stand up and pour carefully. Great, so the water came out clean. What's next? As soon as we're done, ready to work with the wiper, let's go ahead, half cock the weapon and take this off. The next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna pull our ramrod and we're gonna take the wiper and attach it to the end. If you've got a musket and you don't have a combination tool and a wiper, you need to get them because these are how you care for your investment in the field. It also helps you have a better experience as a soldier because you're carrying what they carried and using what they did. Now I've not seen tow as a regular thing in the field, 
but absolutely having a little bit of a cotton scrap, whether from a shirt sleeve or from an old uh, handkerchief or something sitting around is something you'd be able to get your hands on or maybe something found along the march. We're going to work it into the wraps of the wiper and then we're going to take that and we're going to run that down into the weapon. Okay, I'm doing two things here. One, I'm cleaning the side walls of the musket. The other thing I'm doing is that extra hot water, since I've got the musket turned this way, pointed down, I'm gonna go ahead and blow any extra water through the vent and out the cone. There, so we've got a first dirty rag. We'll take that off, replace it. We want it to come out a lot more clean than that. This is something after you've been somewhere where you've fired your weapon. When you get back to camp, as soon as you can get cooled down or warmed up and get some water, this is something you should be thinking about doing right away. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we have the weapon washed and we've had it wiped out and dried. Now we need to oil it. Exact same process. We'll take some of that sweet oil. We'll dip our rag in the oil, squeeze the excess off, get it on, set onto our wiper. And there we go. We've oiled the inside of the musket. Certainly about as brown as it when it went in, so. Okay, down near the lock area, we have the cone. The ordinance manual is very specific. It says do not put oil in the vent or the first cap may miss fire. Something many of us who've cleaned weapons in the field already know from experimental archeology. span If you have a fouled cone, take your combination tool, back it out, throw it in warm water, and free it up with a cone pick. This is exactly the same process as you just did with the barrel, only you're doing it in a small area just with the cone and keeping the water out of the vent. Once it's nice and dry, screw it back in. It doesn't have to be very tight. It can just touch, not be cranked down. Okay, how do you deal with the outside? We've handled the inside. The ordinance manual says flower of emery. Not something you're always gonna see. You might be able to use ash to polish with. You might be able to get rotten stone from a sutler. You might just put a little oil on the outside to protect it. After the barrel's been cleaned, dried, and oiled, the ordinance manual says there's one more thing to do. Take your tompion, put it in the end to protect the barrel. All right, we've talked about how to care for the inside of the barrel, the outside of the barrel, and the cone area according to the ordinance manual. I hope this gives you a chance to get a greater connection to what the soldier in the Civil War went through, especially if you use it out in the field in the living history environment. Good luck with it. We'll see you in the field.